Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. All this week, we will be celebrating Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's Royal Jubilee. 60 fantastic years. Today, the show comes to you from Royal Windsor. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They brought along their treasures. They are keen to do business. They want to sell their items. I'm going to put them with our dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 200. Could I tempt you into a wee bit more? No. No? If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to tell you to reject it and gamble and go to auction. You uh, might get a little bit more money there. £90. I will be on hand to help you and to advise you. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. We're all ready to go. We're ready to sit down to engage our dealers. We want to walk out of this room with bags of money in our pockets with the real deal. Coming up on today's Royal Special, we meet the lady whose home is a shrine to the royal family. I've got my television in my city and more or less the royals have taken over the rest of the house. The royal collectors who can't wait to coin it in. Why are you selling it? Wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> it's over to Ian Towning. Will this compact little lot be a winner for him? Russian, age-wise, what did you think it is? I don't think it's the Imperial Russian. It's not the older Russian, for example, 1890s, 1900s. I think it's from the communism area because it's uh, got uh, Leningrad on the front, which is a name for St. Petersburg. So it yeah. could be 1920s, 1930s? Correct, yeah, so yeah, that, not sure. That area. But, I mean, it's in quite a good condition and you s it's... You say compact, but inside there is no glass. But I imagine there would have been a glass there at one time with a piece holding it in, which is probably gone. I think it's good enough even to use as a pillbox. I did, to be honest with you, I bought it described as a pillbox or as a snuff box. And where did you buy it? In this country? I bought it in this country retail a few years ago now. OK. So what would I pay for it? 20 pounds. <laughs> Your eyes just turned up. Yes. Well, I think to me, yeah. Um, okay. I wouldn't want to pay more than hundred pounds for it. Can I push you just for a little bit more, Ian? I think it's. I think Everybody it's a good. Everybody wants a little bit I, more. I think it's a good offer. I'm not insulted by the offer. I, was I hoping bet you're you, not. I was hoping that you might just just up just a little bit. What was the general valuation on it? Um, it was around eighty to one twenty. Yeah. So I'm right in the middle. Yeah, you're not bad actually. You know. So that's, is that your final offer, Ian? <laughs> well, there you are. Have a drink on me. As you as you come up a little bit, I did pay around that that figure a little while back, so I think that's acceptable. Yeah. Just as well about a fiver. <laughs> I hope you've got a nice Russian that will come and buy it off you. I hope so too. So we have a deal yes. at 105. 105. That's fine. Oh my lord! Thank you very much Thank for you, being Thank you, Ian. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Ian uh, said to me that he thought it was a compact, and I originally bought it as a, as a pill box or a snuff box, so it was interesting that Ian actually pointed that out to me. I wouldn't have sold it for a lot less, and I didn't think it would make a lot more, so I thought we were probably about in the middle of what it was going to make, so no one's quite happy. The Honourable Michael Hogburn's next lot is fast approaching, but has he met his match in Dave? The Duke and auctioneer William Rouse lurk nearby to witness a meeting of minds. Can you tell me what you know about it? Um, it was given to me by a friend. I gave her, was about to give her some money, and she says, Dave, look, just take it, because I always, I make miniatures, and, I, yeah. and um, she just said I could have it. So you, so you I go paint over, miniatures? No, 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 or... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a miniaturist. I make miniature little bears. Oh, I love it. I make miniature little bears. So, Do I get that free, because we're on TV um, together? No, I'm so sorry you don't. It's very miniature miniature, isn't yes. it? We'll leave him there to bring you good luck. Oh, OK. He might. You never know. Right, so, yeah, so I made miniature bears and tiny antique miniature toys. So yeah. we are talking, to boil it down, 
trading, bartering, getting a swap. Yes. She gave you that, you gave her a few miniatures. Correct, Correct. yeah. Love it, love it a lot. Well, let's go through it. I'll tell you what we've got, okay? When we look on the back here, we've got it on panel. Nice mahogany panel. It's not a pine one, so that's even better. When we turn it over, we've got virtually the original frame. It's an ebonized frame. Okay. And I would say, if I was dating this, it would be 1860, 1880. And you can normally tell that by the, the sort of the style of the painting and things mm. like that. And it's unsigned, which is a shame, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's you know, if you're going to do something, sign it. Now, William, small oval oil painting on board, continental. What do you think about it? I think it could be Austrian or German or that, certainly that part of the world, but uh, it's a good thing really. I think he should be putting a fairly good price on the table for it. The independent valuers, well they've gone in with a fairly modest estimation. Where are you going to be? Well I think 120, 180 would generate some interest. I think they're, they're in the same region. If that goes to auction, there's a reasonable chance that a private buyer will see that at good value for money at a couple of hundred quid. But Hoggy, he likes a picture. Let's see what he puts on the table. I'll tell you what I'd like to pay for it, and I'll tell you what I'm going to bid for we'll it. see if it works. I'm going to go for 20, 40, 60 pounds. My response to that is no way. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Let's get a good way, then. What about 80 pounds? No way. Really? Really. Mm. I'll go 90. I really don't feel like I go much more. William, what do you think about the £90 offer? Well, it's not an unreasonable offer. I'm sure you can make a good profit, a really good profit at that, so maybe a tiny bit more wouldn't be un an unreasonable request. You've heard what William says. He thinks it's a reasonable offer. I think it's on the low side, and I need to get in there and tell our seller. I really don't feel like I go much more. Oh, David, I need you. You know, he's a mate of mine, Hoggy, and he, <laughs> he's a slow starter. But he can get more money down when he wants to do, David. Okay. 100 to 150, 120 to 180 is where the independent valuers are placing it. I think it could do well at the auction, but, you know, it's a gamble. It depends who's there on the day. Okay. I'm going to say to you, get that <laughs> bought. There's profit in that, Hoggy. I see profit in that. Very charming subject matter. There you go. There's two P's in this game. Mm. There's profit and there's passion. Mm. And you need to have both of those to buy something. Right. Now, I've got the passion there, but I can't see the profit. OK. And if I pay more than 90 quid, I'm out of the running on that. OK, I'll go to auction. You're going to go to auction? Going to go to auction. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank thanks you anyway. Much. Bless you. It's the, it's the sort of thing I can buy at 90 quid all day long. You can make 30, 40 quid on it. And if it goes to auction, I see it doing 120, 140. So Hoggy thinks he's on the money. But both Davids think it'll fetch more. Let's find out who's right. 130. Now, Dave, you brought along a rather nice 19th century oval oil painting on a board of a young girl with a birdcage and a small bullfinch inside. The reserve is 130. Is it going to make it? I hope so. Here it is. And I've got a bid straight in. I'm bid 120. That's what we like to hear. 120. At 120, all done. Anybody else want to come in at 120 pounds? Then 120 it is. Would you accept 120? There's a bid at 120. Your reserve is 130. I can sell that for 120 if you want to sell it. Yes, we can. We, we, we've decided we will let it go at a cheap price at 120. <laughs> 120 pounds under the gavel. We've got some commissions to take off. Just over 100 quid, 102 quid. That was the real deal. Real deal. Next up, we're with the chief lady in waiting, Alison Chapman. But will she think this item is worth its weight in gold? Hello, my name's Alison. How do you do? Hi, man. Anne. And you've brought in this gold chain? Yes, I have. I've weighed it. It's just over 47 grams. Mm -hmm. It's a nice design. So how long have you owned it? 15, 20 years, yes. Okay. Why did you buy it? Did you buy it yourself or was it a present? Um, I bought it for myself, but unfortunately for a number of years now it's just been sitting in the drawer. How would you feel if it was going to be melted down? Um, I'd, I'd just take things as they come right. and um, I'm just not wearing it at the moment. In fact, I don't think I've actually worn it in the last 12 years. 
Really? The truth be known, yes. OK. Right, well, let's put the money on the table, Anne. 100. 200. 300. 400. 450. 470. 480. That's my offer. OK. Um, a little bit more? I feel that's a good offer. It's a good gold price offer. Um, when you say a little bit more, I don't know what you're anticipating on the gold price. Um, because I expect to make a profit. Maybe um, another one of these or two of those. No, because then that won't show me any profit. Not even another ten? <laughs> yeah. I'll give you another five. Yeah, 485. OK, deal. You sure? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Well done. Okay. Good okay. decision. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up, <laughs> this couple are on for a big gamble. I wouldn't mind a weekend in Vegas. <laughs> Can David persuade Hoggy to part with more money? She's not going to Blackpool. She's going to Vegas. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Windsor. Hoggy is getting into the spirit of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee with these wall plaques, but will he make a royally good offer? Mum, daughter. That's right. That's right. Yes. What's your names? Mine's Lillian. Uh, Amanda. Well, thank you for coming on with uh, some royalty memorabilia. Mm -hmm. How long have you had it? Do I have to tell the truth? Yeah, go on, we don't care. <laughs> My husband bought that one in a pub. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't speak to him for a week. Why? I hate it. Okay. <laughs> and I don't I think we found that in a junk shop. Not, yeah. a, not an antique shop, a junk shop. Why are you selling them? Wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you might have a good excuse, like they fell off the wall and I thought that your was, toe or something. I thought now is the time. Yeah. This is Good stuff. It's royalty memorabilia and this year Diamond Jubilee. Yes. Gonna be a good year for royalty. Edward VIII. The king that yes. never was. This one is George VI. Uh, not as good as condition as that one, which is brass. And this one's more like a spelter, which is like a simulated bronze, really. Got ideas of money? What you want to go on holiday or? I wouldn't mind a weekend in Vegas. A weekend in Vegas, yeah. Uh, so, I'll tell you where I'll start. I will offer you 20... 30 pounds. What more than that, don't we, Mum? Do you? Well, you found that in a garage, and your husband bought that for a pint. Sort of. Pub. Yeah, but well, that all right, was 40 about years ago. 40 pounds, then, for 40 years ago. Pound for every year you've owned it. How much would you be happy with? I'd like to make your mum happy. A lot more than that. I'll go fifty pounds. Mm -hmm. No, more. I've, I've got to make a little bit. Yeah, David. Just... Let's see what we can do. So it's Lillian yeah. and Amanda, your yes. daughter. Yeah. Now, two nice uh, plaques here. Yeah. Commemorative items. Yeah. The theme of the program fits perfectly. I oh, know. The only thing that doesn't fit perfectly is the money that's on the table, is it? <laughs> I'm glad you said that, David. So we've got yeah. fifty quid on the table. Let me tell you what the independent value is in the auction. <laughs> say. 50 to 70. Oh, OK. 50 to 80. Oh, not too so, bad. So, it's the lower part of the estimate. Yes. Now, there's a reason why you want to sell these. You want to use the money for what reason? Weekend in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Weekend in Vegas. You're not going to deny that? No. Snake eyes. <laughs> Do you like the, uh, the dice? Do you like the blackjack? Do you like the slot machines? The slot machines. <laughs> OK. Stop. I'm going to say we need to try and raise a little bit more money, Hoggy, here. Yeah. 50 to 70, 50 to 80. Come on. Just stay Vegas, there. Vegas, here we come. Stay there. There's the oh. viber. A fiver? David! Okay. He's not very generous, is he? No, Hoggy, <laughs> I thought you were going to get out another 15 quid. She's not going to Blackpool. She's going to Vegas. How about 60 quid? How about putting that fiver down, Hoggy? 65 quid. I'm going to move out of the way because... Um, Don't go uh, far. OK. <laughs> Hoggish, being very, very generous, never look a gift horse in the mouth. 
that 65 quid my turn into a fortune in the slot machines of Las Vegas. Yeah, you never that's know. Right. Best of luck to you girls. Hoggy, thanks very much indeed. 65 quid, yeah. girls. We're all right with that, aren't we? Well, it's up to you. Deal or no deal. <laughs> yeah. Good one, Lillian. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. it. Enjoy Thank Vegas and, wow, I've been spanked. <laughs> <laughs>I often wonder why I buy things like this, because I always know they're going to be so hard to sell. 65 quid, they were lovely ladies. I might sell them. I might not. Will Hoggy be left holding the coins? Find out later. Now for something a little special to commemorate the Queen's Jubilee. And nobody knows more about the royal family than avid memorabilia collector and super fan Margaret Taylor. This is my home, and you're very welcome to come in and have a look around. Um, I've been collecting for just over 30 years, starting with the engagement and wedding of Charles and Diana. You know, every time there's something to collect, I collect it. When I was a little girl, we didn't have a television, so I couldn't watch the coronation, and I was broken-hearted about that, and I was determined that when I got older, I would have as much royal stuff as I could, and I just love it. I think it's a fascinating family and a fascinating story. People leave stuff on my doorstep, but even if I'm not in, they still leave it for me, so I unwrap that and read that. Amazing. It occupies nearly all of my life. Sometimes I miss meals, I forget. I forget to eat. I think, gosh, I feel hungry, but it's because I missed a meal, because I was so busy doing this. I do live here, but I haven't got an awful lot of room now. I've got my television and my city, and more or less the royals have taken over the rest of the house. But I don't mind. I enjoy it. I love living with it. I don't think you can have too much royal memorabilia, no, I don't think so, because it's all part of history. Most people have got something in their house to remind them of the royal family. It might be a coronation mug or something like that. But I'm really pleased because I think every household should have something on the royal family. I'm very disappointed if they don't. You've already seen the amazing piece of film of Margaret Tyler's collection. Almost 10,000 items. How long have you been doing this, Margaret? Just over 30 years. It's a long time. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, what impressed me so much was Princess Diana had her own room. Yes, yes. Well, she had to, didn't she? She's such a fabulous person. I've got a painting of her on the ceiling. I've got stained glass windows on her. She had to. OK. If I was to offer you zillions and zillions and zillions of pounds right now, would you sell your collection? No way. <laughs> now, that's what I call a royalist and a real royal memorabilia collector. We're off to picturesque Italy, but will Alison be captivated enough by these beautiful scenes to offer big? Hello, my name's Alison. Hi, I'm Alison. Oh, to Alison's. Yes, very good. What quality? Good start. A very good start, and a particularly good start for me mm. because you've brought me two Venetian scenes. Yes. And the one place I love is Venice. And I know these scenes so well, but do you know more about them? Do you know anything at I all? I know very little. Um, my father originally came from Birmingham. He died, left them to me, but at the time my mother was still alive, so as they were part of their decor, their furniture, I said to her, well, when you no longer need them, I'll take them back. And she died in June of last year, so that was when I took back ownership of them. And the artist, is it Biondetti? Yes. I don't know of him. Is he, is he of any note? Um, I don't know too much about the paintings. I haven't done any research on them, to be honest. OK. Well, you can see that they're competent, very yes. competent. And if I looked at them, I would almost think that this guy was a very able architectural drawer, yes. without a doubt. There's a great amount of detail in them. Yes. But I do like them. And why would you part with them? They don't go with the decor. Um, somebody will love them and want them on display. Oh. And I think it's a wicked waste to have them behind our sofa at home. OK, right, well, I'll get my money out. My bid comes from how I feel about the pictures. Okay. Okay. 100. 200. OK. Right, it's very generous. Could I tempt you into a wee bit more? 
No. No? Because okay. there are a lot of pictures about yes. of Venice. Yeah. The scenes that he has depicted interest me because I know yeah. that it is a more unusual scene. Yes. But isn't the scenes that perhaps attract most buyers? Because okay. it's not a scene that people normally relate to when no. they go to Venice. Mm -hmm. So it's more and of a I personal think, thing. Yes. Yeah. And my offer is 200 quid. Okay. I think because you're passionate about it, and because otherwise they will go back to a life behind the sofa or to auction, I will accept your offer. If it pleases you to know this, I have a wall at home mm. with lots of pictures like this of Venice. Oh wow. And they will just be added to my wall. Brilliant. Well, that's where they deserve to be. That's you know, that's what would be nice for them rather than, you know, it's lovely to have had them in the family, but they're so wasted. Really no, wasted. No, I should be happy to go home with them. Okay. That's Thank good. you, Alison. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so pleased with these. I know it's said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I fell in love with these as soon as I saw them. I know the scenes they're depicting and the quality, the quality of the architecture is very high. And I can't believe that I've been able to walk home with these for 200 pounds. Coming up, Hoggy yeah. gets yeah. cheeky. This says, buy me cheap in English. Is it? No, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Windsor. It's been a busy day celebrating the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. And with no time to lose, it's over to David, who's joined by a very special guest. I've got a fascinating gentleman here to introduce you to, Ian Shapiro. How did it? Now, Ian, you have brought along your personal collection of royal memorabilia. What started you out on this collection? I think as a very young boy I discovered that one could buy a letter written by Queen Victoria in her own handwriting for not terribly much money. And I thought that was a very exciting thing to own and research and then expand into a collection of letters written by all the monarchs that we've had in this country. And it has been a successful collection and can be done. Well, let's have a look at some of the wonderful things that you've kindly brought along today. This photograph here, and of course that is Queen Victoria, it's dated 1895, and it has her signature. Yes. What can you tell me about that? I acquired it because images of Queen Victoria signed are not terribly common. She presented them to prominent people at the time. Mm. And what that photograph shows is not only the Queen at her writing desk, but in the background, even signed in 1895, is a photograph of Prince Albert, who had died in 1861. And that shows the link in history and this huge emotional attachment that the Queen had to her deceased husband, the Prince Consort. And, and, and this statement of mourning, it, it is so obvious. It's very dramatic. It was a state of mind and it dominated society from the moment that Albert died until the Queen really came out in public in the 1870s. It was a huge problem for the British government at the time. Let's move on now to the second part of your collection, which is, of course, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, and this, I think, is astonishing. What you have here is this wonderful framed photograph by Cecil Beaton. Yes. Uh, it's signed by Cecil Beaton, the photographer, and, of course, it's signed by Her Majesty as well. Tell me about it. Presentation frames, such as this with a royal cipher at the top, are presented by the Queen on special occasions to particular individuals. This is an iconic image because this really represents the start of the second Elizabethan age in this country. Amazing. And it's rare, it's in demand, and I haven't seen another for a very long time. And, and this last document I found very, very interesting because what we have here is a royal command document. Absolutely. Known as a coronation summons, if you were important enough to be invited to the coronation yes. at Westminster Abbey, you would have received a hand-signed summons by the Queen, signed at the top, Yes. in the way that royal documents are signed, and one responds to it positively, hopefully, and together with that, that has survived since 53, is the admission ticket to Westminster Abbey, and I guess that the person who was invited went along, and a great start for collecting the present reign of the Queen. OK. So, Ian, a fantastic collection here of royal memorabilia. All week, 
we are doing programmes associated uh, with the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. It has been a fantastic reign, and Mom, long may you continue. We're back in the dealer's den with Ian. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, I'm Ian. Hi, I'm Irina. Irina, lovely to meet you. Yeah. Three like it's two. Quite incredibly designed and patterned. I think we'll turn it this way so that it can actually be appreciated. All little beads that have been inset, and I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Tremendous amount of work. Even the edges are done with this work. And then where it's split and damaged, <laughs> it's quite funny to see this. They've tried to repair it. And they've tried to repair it in a manner where it looks like a pattern, which is quite thoughtful. You know, trying to disguise the whole thing. To me, it looks like it's Aboriginal. What do you think? Yes, that's what I think, yeah. You think it's Aboriginal? Yeah. yeah. And where did you buy it? I bought it in an antique shop in Lincoln. Lincoln? Yeah. And how long ago did you buy it? About three, four years ago. And did they not tell you where it might have come from, originated no, he, from? The, the, the dealer there, he had lots of tribal things and he said it was African, but I didn't think so. I have a strong suspicion that it is Australian, Aboriginal, in which case it will end up going back there. And my advice to you would be that it should go into an auction. I think it will quite do quite well and I think one should try it that way. It will get the right sort of exposure, you know, on the internet, the auction house will make sure it's well advertised and put a sensible reserve on it so that you don't give it away but on the other hand not be too greedy depending on what you paid for it three, four years ago and I would say try it in auction. Would you like to do that? Yes. Have you been to auction? Yes. You have? Yes, you look the type that you've been to many auctions. So good luck in auction. Thank you very and much. Let's hope it makes you a lot of money. Thank, Thank you for you. bringing it along. Thank you. There may not be a place for the stool in Ian's shop, but here's hoping that the sale run will come up trumps. On the dealer's day, Irena brought along an interesting tribal stool. Ian Towning didn't even make an offer on it. She can't make it today, so I'm looking after her interests. It's here in the sale room. It's got a £150 reserve. Is he going to make it? You never know with this type of merchandise. Let's see what happens. Is it worth £100? 100 to go. 110. £120. It's got 120. There's always interest in ethnic art, you know. £120 for that stool, £130 I'll take. And £120 all done. Anybody else? £120, £120. It didn't make it on the day. 150 was the reserve. No offer uh, was made by our dealer. So I'm going to award the real deal to the sale room. It got up to £120. Strange, this tribal art. It's either good, bad or indifferent, and you're never quite sure. On this occasion, it just didn't sell. Oh, Irina, it was only just short of its reserve. What a shame. We're flying over to Hoggy's table, where he's in for a ride, a magic carpet ride. Tell me about your carpets, rugs. Well, they were bought in Abu Dhabi. Right. My sister lived out there for a while, but she moved back about two years ago, two to two and a half years ago. Yeah. And the house that she's in now, there's no space for display. No. So she's just got them rolled up. Sad. In really, a corner isn't it? somewhere. Really? Yes. <laughs> you see, in Abu Dhabi, in a house out there, they would sit quite well, wouldn't they, on the walls? Yeah, because it would fit the into that houses environment, are really. quite massive. You yeah, see. absolutely. And this down here, this is signed. Yeah, they're all signed. They're all signed. All of them, and there's yes. seven, let's not yeah. get it wrong, there's a few not on here. So yes. It's seven rugs, and you're selling them as one lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a package. This says, buy me cheap in English. Is it? No, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak. I don't speak Arabic. I'm afraid. This is Arabic, so. and it says Michael can have these cheap because I like him. No, I don't. Nah, say that, it, it no. doesn't. Are you expecting lots of money for these? I'm sure they cost you lots. Oh yeah, they did. How much did you pay for all of them? Um, one of them, I think that the the biggest one was oh about a thousand pounds. I can believe that. Because of the quality of these 
and because of the potential they would have in a sale room, and because they're so young, I really don't think I can make you an offer on it. Okay. It's, it's not my area of expertise, to be honest with you, and I just think you'd make a lot more money out of these seven rugs by taking them to auction. I mean, let's see what David says. Well, I've just heard what Michael has said, and, and I think I agree, because what we haven't got amongst our experts on the programme, we haven't got a rug specialist. And so I'm saying it's in your best interest yeah. if we go to the sale room, let a specialist rug expert within the sale room complex uh, catalogue these individually, we'll maximise the best price we can get. The auctioneer is saying somewhere in that two to three thousand pound range for seven rugs. I think that's realistic. Yeah. And I think what we should do is get to the auction, maximise your price, and then you'll be going home with a nice few quid. Thank you, David. That was such sound advice, wasn't it, really? Because, like you yeah. said, you know, once it gets to the auction, they will catalogue them properly and the buyers will be there looking at them. OK. So, auction it is. Yes. Have auction you been to auction is. before? No. Wow, you're in for a surprise. I am. Seven lots of paradise. Nice to meet you. Thanks Thank for coming on. Thank you very on. much. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. So, the rugs fly off to auction and Hoggy's prediction could be coming true. 850. They're going for this one oh. in the big ones. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Windsor, where we're celebrating the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Before the break, a fine collection of rugs arrived on Hoggy's table. Because of the quality of these, I really don't think I can make you an offer on it. So let's march over to the cell room where the seven rugs are about to go under the hammer. Now, Shireen, on the dealer's day, you brought along a collection of fairly modern silk Persian rugs. There were seven in all. Yep. Uh, you sat down on the dealer's day with Michael Hogburn, uh, and Michael said, look, I don't really understand these. I can see they're good quality, but they're not really my cup of tea. I suggest you go to the auction. Yes. They're split into seven lots. The first lot is coming up now. Let's see what they do. Here it is now, the first lot. Uh, start this, start me £400 for it. 400 420 440 Here at 460 480 500 and 50 600 and 50 700 700 pounds 750 yes 800 800 pounds then on the phone with the record 800 anybody else want to come in 800 pounds okay the first one's made 800 pounds a very good start start me 400 pounds a lot 400 I bid downstairs 420 440 460 480 500 and 50 600 pounds for the lady, you want 650 upstairs? 650, 700, 750, 800, 850. 850 on the telephone, there are bids in the room here. There are carpet professional dealers everywhere. 900 down below, 950, you want 1,000 pounds? 1,000 pounds, 1,100 is the next bid. And 1,000 pounds, 1,100, 1,200. 1,200 pounds down below it is at 1,200. Anybody else want to come in? That's it, 1,200. A great start. First one brought £800, the second rug brought £1,200. Lot 13, there we go, start with this one, £500 to go. Five, 500, I'm in here, 500. And 50, 600. And 50, 700. And 50, 800. And 50, 900. And 50, 950 there. £1,000. All right, 1,050. 1,100 upstairs. 1150. Very similar to the, to the last lot, which brought 1200. 1200. 1250. 1200. You all done? 1250. 1250 pounds. Let's go to the fourth lot. 400 pounds for this one. 400 I'm bid. 420. 420. 440. In the room at 440. This one a bit underestimate. 440. OK, that's four rugs sold. We're going to the fifth rug now. Uh, start with this one, £400 for this. I bid 400 420 440 there. 460 upstairs, 480 500 550 600 £600. Pounds. Telephone bidder against the room there. here. All right, 620 650 upstairs. 650 it is then upstairs. Anybody else? 650 
We're now going into 15A. This is the sixth rug. So this one, start me, this one, £400 for this. And bid 420 I'll take £400. You're 420 upstairs. 420 440 460 480 500 50 600 750 700 700 yet 750 800 50 900 900 pounds 950 1000 pounds 1100 1200 they're going for this one the big world 1300 and 1300 pounds then Great result, £1,300, one, two, three, four, five, six rugs have sold. Um, and we're coming up to the last rug now. Start me this one, start me £400 to go, 400 I bid and 20 I'll take upstairs. Or 20, or 40, or 60, or 80, 500, and 50, 600, and 50, 700, and 50, 800, and 50, 900, and 50, £1,000. All right, uh, 1,050. We're at 1,050 on the last row now. 1,100. 1,150. 1,200. At 1,200 pounds. Hands everywhere in the room. Telephone bidder. 1,250. 1,300. 1,350. 1,350 down below at 1,350. At 1,350 pounds, I'm going to sell it. The final rug has just gone down at £1,350. What's your first reaction? Oh, my first reaction. Oh, Are you pleased? I am so pleased. Really? I am very pleased. Very pleased with that. On the day in the sale room, there's been a lot of excitement. There's been a lot of competition. The total for your seven rugs is £6,990. So it's just a fraction under £7,000. We have to take away 15%, and that's going to leave you with something near to 5950 just a little bit less than that. Happy? Happy. Very happy. Delighted. And that is the real deal. So, a spectacular result for Shireen. But which of our dealers have had a royally good day? It's modern. It's silver. Okay. I think it's okay. very nice as it is. Try as he might, Ian still has hold of the silver compact. He's had lots of interest and is confident <laughs> the right buyer is just around the corner. <laughs> 65 quid, they were lovely ladies. I might sell them. I might not. Hoggy's gamble paid off when he put them in an auction and the gavel came down at £120 for the pair. Uh, unless it's an antique piece, yes. these are pretty much selling for their gold weight. Mm -hmm. Alison did just that and scrapped the gold chain, earning a nice little sum. After saying how much she wanted to keep the paintings for herself... I have a wall at home with lots of pictures like this of Venice. Oh, wow. And they will just be added to my wall. Brilliant. She just couldn't help herself when an American client made an offer too good to refuse, and she sold them on for a whopping £500 profit. Once a dealer, always a dealer. Are you pleased? I am so pleased. Really? I am very pleased. But there's no doubt that Shireen has been crowned the real winner today, with her collection of rugs reaching nearly £6,000 at auction. Happy spending, Shireen. We've had a great day here in Royal Windsor. There's been bags of action, lots of selling, lots of buying. And to sing us out, the Royal Free Singers.